Hey guys, welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesday. This one is all about steam kits as they're used on LS engines. We're big proponents of using a four fork steam kit. I'll make another video about this later where uh, we talk about why you should run it, but the simple answer is, is it balanced cylinder temperatures around the corner. So when you're tuning, it makes things easier and safer um, and you can make more power as a result of it. But we have a new LSA steam kit out, which kind of reminded me we need to talk about where these things are going. So you're connecting all four corners of the head and the basic design of a steam kit isn't anything groundbreaking. It's just making something that's usable. But you know, the your biggest uh, concern needs to be that your top port where the steam exits needs to be above the other four ports. That way, if it was below, the steam would sit at the top here and never get out. But since it's at the top, um, this port is going to get it out to the radiator. So all the steam bubbles uh, air is going to come out of all four corners into here into one main line. On our blocks, on all of our systems, this is a 4 a.m. So on our hard line kit, we have a hard line, but you can always take that hard line off and just run a 4 a.m. line right up to it. So you can buy a straight fitting and whatever you need on a radiator and a length of line and make your own line to connect this to the radiator. Now, the most important part of it is that you don't put this back into the water pump because that's kind of the common tendency. It looks great to put it right back to the water pump, but in turn, you're basically just reintroducing that steam and uh, air right back into the system. Uh, thereby not really doing much and you have you know possibility of just kind of negating the whole point of connecting all four corners so if you're familiar with the LS stuff the line that comes here which would actually be here typically um, will go right to the radiator now there's a little bit of a misconception on where that goes in the radiator so this is your typical aluminum fabricated radiator many of the factory radiators have a spot um, where the steam kit goes and that's great, but uh, as we all know, most of these are swaps that we're working on these days. Or you'll remove the plastic radiator because it has a chance of blowing out the end caps with boost and everything. Um, or just these cool better in general. So this is a dual pass radiator. It doesn't matter if it's a single, dual, or triple. The general idea of where the steam kit needs to go is that it needs to go right below the radiator cap. The radiator cap has an actuator spring that's based off of pressure and uh, you can get different pressure rating caps, 12, 15, 17, 19, 21, and so on. And basically that cap, you know, as it builds up pressure inside of the cooling system is gonna release that pressure and it's gonna come out this port into an overflow, which you always should have an overflow, especially on a boosted car. So this port is designed into the um, dimension of a cap. So when that opens and relieves pressure, the fluid air, everything goes out that. So you definitely do not want to hook your steam kit up to this because you will basically be sealing off the system and that's really uh, not a good thing. So what we suggest folks do is get yourself an eighth inch NPT weld bung. We sell them, they're cheap. And weld it in any of the sides of this uh, top of this tank. So basically here, here, here. And it's going to be right below the radiator cap. So all of that steam pressure air is going to basically sit into a pocket right here. There's usually a dead space here anyways. And then as that pressure builds up, it's gonna push the cap up and relieve out the system and do everything as it was intended to do. That's the way the factory designed it. That's the way we suggest to run it. And uh, I think you're gonna have your best results as a, as a result of it. So don't run it to the water pump. Don't tap it into anything else. If you do have an expansion tank uh, with a cap on it, because you have like a remote mount radiator, you can definitely plumb this right into that as well. But for most people with a traditional front mount style radiator, get yourself a weld bung, weld it in there, and you'll be good to go. So thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're not familiar, we have these steam kits for a lot of different options. We have a hardline one for high-rise intakes. It's really cool. Uh, it's all hand-built here. We have a uh, flex line kit for a traditional plastic intake. We have a do-it-yourself. We have this LSA specific. They all use for gullet hoses and fittings. Really nice stuff. Solved the problem of uh, having some rear cylinders that are way hotter than the front ones and uh, head gasket issues and everything else. So check out a link below to our website. You can check out all of them and uh, good luck out there.